You've probably heard the term full stack developer, but what about full stack designer? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain exactly what a full stack designer is, along with the necessary skills and tools you will need to become one. Now in short, a full stack designer is one who is able to handle the entire process of designing a brand identity for a company, along with their associated user interfaces such as their websites and apps, and also be able to implement that user interface in the browser along with the implementation of any interactivity. So this requires a lot of tools and skills, so let's get started. All right, let's go ahead and rock. The hair's out in full force today. <laughs> And I literally just woke up uh, to record this video. So anyhow, um, let's answer the question, the obvious one, in a more specific context. What is a full stack developer? I mean, wait, full stack designer. Did I tell you I just woke up? So let's check this out. All right. So in my purview, I believe a full stack designer is first a UI UX designer. And to elaborate a little bit more on that specifically, um, I would say more so a UI designer rather than a UX designer. There is overlap and of course UI is a subset un under the umbrella term of UX or user experience designer. Um, but I don't think it's necessary that a full stack designer really engage or have a really strong foundation in research and testing, which is another one of those pillars of UX design. So I'm gonna say you don't necessarily have to have that, but you can still consider yourself a UI UX designer, especially if you're a great UI designer, So you because you would understand UX patterns by default. So first, you start with that, I would say. Second, front-end development as it pertains to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which you might wonder, isn't that really what front-end development is already? Well, yes, but when we're talking about JavaScript specifically, I you only have to concern yourself with a subset of JavaScript. Um, you don't have to worry about understanding how to interact with databases. That wouldn't be in the purview of a full stack designer, um, but you would have to worry about DOM manipulation and things like that, and we'll talk about that more. Um, basic identity design knowledge, all right? So are you able to design an identity uh, guideline or uh, logo design and all that stuff and understand you know brand identities. Um, I would say basic identity de design knowledge. You wouldn't have to be an expert. And I say that this is part of a full stack designer because A, it is design, it's identity design, but it's also something that accompanies basically every project that you work with uh, that needs a user interface of some sort or a website. They're always gonna have uh, a logo design or in an identity, uh, a certain color palette. So I would say having that identity design knowledge is also part of a full stack designer's toolkit, so to speak. And then also, and you'll notice this little asterisk right here. I'm saying this is optional. I would say if you wanna be considered a full stack designer extraordinaire, <laughs> then you would need to know I uh, WebGL slash 3JS slash shaders knowledge. And having that in your toolkit allows you to create some of those really crazy experiences in the browser that utilize your graphics cards that can do all sorts of really cool things that otherwise these things, you know, these two things above, front end development, just regular HTML, CSS, and JavaScript wouldn't allow you to do otherwise. All right. So we're gonna talk about I uh, a lot of this in depth here. Okay, so let's first talk about that first point, which is the UX, UI UX design. So I would say you need to first establish, if you're interested in UI UX design, you have to establish specifically UI design, fundamental knowledge. So what are those fundamentals? Sometimes people call them principles, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you need to understand as it relates to UI or user interfaces, colors, all right, so you have to understand color theory and how they work together in a UI and how you piece them together to create a nice cohesive uh, uh, layout essentially. Um, you have to understand contrast, especially as it pertains to type because you, you wanna make sure your type is readable. You also have to understand topography, which is a field in and of itself, but when it comes to UI design, you can get away with not knowing everything about topography. Um, you also need to understand white space. I'm um, understanding you know, how that empty space plays an important role even though it's void and there's nothing there. Also alignment, how to align your things correctly along columns and also rows. Scale, you know, how big should this be versus that? 
proximity, you know, I how close should things be together? Sometimes other people call this groupings. And then also visual hierarchy, which visual hierarchy is just placing importance over certain elements. We can see a visual hierarchy here in this little slide design. UI UX design fundamentals is a title, it's bigger, uh, and thus we've deemed it to be more important. That's kind of a very simplified version of what visual hierarchy is. So understanding these fundamentals is what you need to understand first if you wanna become a full stack designer. Um, and I, I don't mean first, like you could still dabble in, in front end development knowledge. It's not like you have to do this certain uh, path, but you certainly, if you wanna understand UI design, you have to understand these. I would say first, it would really behoove you to uh, understand these. Now, UI design software. All right, what do you have at your expense in terms of what you wanna learn? Well, uh, you could learn uh, Adobe Figma. Now, I know that might sound strange to some of you who haven't realized the news yet from a few months ago that Adobe bought Figma. Uh, but Adobe, Figma here is and has been for the last several years or four or five perhaps, the most popular UI UX design software. So you can't go wrong with that. Um, also, there's Penpot, which is a relatively new open source alternative to Figma. All right, I uh, in they're they're adding features, and in fact, this month they're they're adding um, auto layout, and so you know a lot of people have switched over because they hate Adobe. <laughs> <laughs> I, and so it, it's a suitable alternative. I don't think it has all the features yet. It's not quite there, but they're working on it. Um, you also have Sketch. If you uh, if you have a Mac, you can perfectly use Sketch. Sketch has been around for a long, long time. Um, and then there's also Lunacy, and there's a few others as well. Um, so let's talk about prototyping software. Well, first you might want to you might wonder what is prototyping. Well, basically it's just adding interactivity to your UI designs that you create. And there are some services um, and, and SaaS and startups that really take the prototyping abilities and put it on steroids. So for instance, Figma has prototyping built in and it's actually pretty good. Um, but if you wanna go more so and actually add logic and conditionals and really get close to what the what the final, you know, uh, idea of the layout will look like in a browser without actually doing code, then Protopie is a is probably the best one out there that's specific to that purpose. Uh, and also Proto.io as well. So you can import your Figma prototypes uh, into these apps and then just like add really cool interactivity to them. Now, low to no code software, this is optional. Um, but they're becoming really popular. I, I'm, I, like I, again, you can completely skip this route if you don't want to deal with low to no code software, but it's, it's, it would be stupid of me not to include a slide about these. So Framer, Webflow, very popular. I would say Webflow is probably the most popular at the moment. Um, basically, you can import your Figma designs and you can essentially structure them so that you don't have to touch any type of front-end development. There's no HTML, CSS, JavaScript they have to worry about, uh, and you can pretty much create a responsive website that's ready to go in the browser without touching code, all right, for the most part. So these are basically the, the, the two big options at the moment. Now, also, UX usability testing software I thought I would put this as well. I don't think, that, I think this is another optional um, as well. You don't have to understand this, uh, but I figured I'd put a slide here on, and there's a lot of these. Uh, basically, a lot of them allow you to import, for instance, something like a Figma prototype, and they'll throw users at it, and they'll get their feedback so that you can get that uh, feedback stage going so that you can improve your uh, design. So now let's switch gears. We're gonna switch gears from UI UX design and now we're gonna talk about front-end development. All right, so you should simply possess a solid understanding of how to translate UIs, your user interfaces, that you or others have created to working projects in the browser. So that's what I mean specifically by front-end development. And that's why I feel if you're a full stack designer, you can you can touch code as well. It, it, it's necessary for you to have that title because you're taking your thing that you created and then you're also having the ability to translate it in the browser, if that makes sense. Um, so the skills that you would need are gonna be HTML and CSS, of course, and then also JavaScript, because JavaScript adds the interactivity, and these three work hand in hand. 
So front-end development, of course, if we're gonna talk about that, we need to talk about HTML. So understanding elements and tags, understanding the concept of closing or self-closing tags, attributes, there's so many different attributes and how they work, understanding that, accessibility, using the area uh, or ARIA uh, accessibility attributes uh, to make sure that your, your HTML is accessible, and then also layout structure, understanding how to structure your HTML document and the node tree so that you, uh, are able to accurately translate with the fewest lines of code possible your UI design structurally. Remember, HTML is like the skeleton and CSS is kind of like the skin uh, and the aesthetics, everything you see. So uh, CSS, understanding basic rule set structure. You know, what is a CSS rule set? Um, what is sizing, translation, and units? So sizing, translation, for instance, is really important when you have a design that you created in an app like Sketch or Figma or PenPot and understanding how to accurately translate that design to the browser with CSS. And you do that through the correct usage of units and also translations. And these are things that I've covered in my recent, I, uh, just a week ago, uh, my crash courses on uh, design and code. So uh, make sure to check those out. Responsive design, um, understanding how to you know make your designs responsive. Typically, people opt for mobile first. Um, you do that with media queries. Container queries are coming as well. Uh, we have a CSS transitions, understanding how to do those and implement those, that's pretty easy. Um, and then uh, CSS animations, not, and not just understanding how to do them technically and how to implement them, but also how to, how to do them in a, in a good way in which your motion animation is on point. So I would say that that's important as well. Um, and then also SAS, understanding SAS. SAS, uh, there's so many different features of SAS, you don't have to be an expert. Um, but understanding um, and, and utilizing some of the great features such as, such as nesting your rule sets is also very handy. I would say that's worth uh, learning as well. Now, front-end development in JavaScript. Now, this is gonna be one of those things where some people are like, if I'm a full stack designer, why do I need to know code, especially code that's like JavaScript, like a scripting language? Uh, and like I was saying, it, it, it's, 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 it's looking at the full picture. Uh, if, if you wanna be a full stack designer, Okay, if you can, you can design a great product, but then your hands are tied when it comes to taking that product and realizing it in the full life cycle, then you're not a full stack designer. So that's why I say a full stack designer can also code as well so that they can realize the end result, the end vision uh, in the browser, which requires JavaScript sometimes if it has interactivity. So vanilla JavaScript basics, I would, I would say start with there first. Um, it would definitely not make sense to jump to something like React without understanding vanilla JavaScript. After that, and by the way, vanilla JavaScript basics, if I go back here, um, that would mean, of course, going through a lot of the basic courses. There's a ton of them, a ton of interactive services. Codecademy has one that I even personally watched recently as a refresher, um, understanding console, log hello world you know you start there understanding how to define properties and variables with let const i uh, and var and all that good stuff understanding functions understanding objects and classes i uh, for while loops i uh, all that good basic stuff and then after that understanding how to use uh, vanilla javascript in order to manipulate the dom all right which is a document object model to your html it's called a node tree uh, basically in short, it means being able to interact and integrate interactivity into the website UI, essentially. Um, after that, GreenSock Animation Platform, or GSAP, uh, which is a common acronym that's referred to as, I have several GreenSock uh, tutorials and also crash courses, but basically it, it makes your animating life easier. And it, it, it's basically a library and you use JavaScript with it. Uh, in order to implement uh, more complex animation sequences that some UIs may warrant. After that, frameworks. React, Vue, Svelte, I have an asterisk here because I'm saying you don't necessarily have to have that knowledge. Um, for instance, barba.js is not part of React, Vue, or Svelte, uh, but it's, it's one of those things that uh, allows you to do smooth page transition animations easily. And a lot of the sites at awards actually use barba.js over um, options like React, Vue, or Svelte. All right, after that, this here, notice the big asterisk, WebGL and 3.js, this is, this is entirely optional. 
but if you really want to have the ultimate tool set, you know, the toolkit rather, um, as a full stack designer, I'm saying that it would be nice to have you. You need to have an understanding of WebJL or at least 3JS. So we'll talk about these two in a second. So understanding the canvas and WebGL. So essentially, um, WebGL it'll it's it's it'll utilize your uh, your graphics card for rendering, um, and it uses the HTML canvas element essentially. And you're you're basically a lot of people use this for gaming in the browser. If you've seen those crazy 3D games, that's WebGL for sure. Um, and I, it's been, essentially, you don't use HTML to piece together a layout. Some of those really crazy, complex looking layouts with all the fancy sort of fabric images and stuff, those weren't created with HTML markup. They were created with WebGL and probably with a library called 3GS. When you write straight up WebGL, which I know pretty much nothing about, I know it's a very complex code, uh, 3GS is a library that sort of bridges that gap for you and makes it easier for you to interact with WebGL essentially. So 3JS in and of itself though, has a pretty big steep learning curve uh, just because WebGL itself is so complex. So 3JS built on top of that, it's not gonna be a cinch to really understand. Um, there's a great course uh, by Bruno, I forget his, I think it's Bruno Simon, is it? I might be wrong, I of I 3JS Journey, I think that's what it's called. I. And it's, it's, it's an excellent course on learning 3JS, essentially. Um, I'll try to remember a link in the YouTube description. And um, understanding how to use that framework uh, to build these more immersive experiences in the browser, which will allow you to do games and crazy stuff, uh, really just unlocks your your uh, your ultimate creativity. I can I, I, I liken it to the, the days of Flash, uh, which was prevalent in the late 90s to early 2000s. Uh, it just allows you just to do crazy effects, particle effects, just uh, just really cool stuff um, if it's done in a good manner and you execute it well. Um, and then there's also shaders. So you can work with shaders inside of 3JS and shaders, I uh, it's one of the most complex topics I would say in I, like a full stack designer's toolkit. I, it's its own little language and it's basically working with uh, how to, like if you've ever seen those pictures or photographs on some of the award sites and how they have like really cool fabric or they erode and they, or they change colors and you're wondering how the heck did they do that? Well, it's probably through shaders. And so shaders are one of those things, it's, it's tough to get your mind around and it's something that I'm actively working myself towards. Um, but once you understand it, it really will unlock, unlock a lot of creativity that you might have that wouldn't be achievable achievable through HTML, uh, CSS, and JavaScript alone. And that, my friends, is essentially it as a full stack designer. If you understand UI, some UX as well, if you understand um, basic identity design knowledge and you can you can design a pretty solid, simple logo and, and, and for a company and also establish you know, the, the brand colors and all that good stuff, the topography, um, and then also you have an understanding of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you're very comfortable with translating your designs and making them a working reality in the browser, then I would say for certain then you are a full stack designer. All right, so these are all things that I'm gonna be covering here, uh, especially the WebGL 3JS stuff here sometime this year. And yeah, um, I will be having a course as well at designcourse.com. And I haven't collected emails yet for it, but I will sh shortly, and I'll, I'll create an announcement video about the upcoming course where we kind of cover uh, more of these immersive experiences in, in the browser uh, with 3JS and such. All right, everybody, make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Check out designcourse.com, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.